Good afternoon. Today I'm going to be reviewing the D-Ward Spino Diver 300. This watch is available on kickstarter.com for US$349. The watch is made by SW Watches, which are a microbrand in South Korea. So this watch is available in four colour options. Nebula Green, Phantom Black, Ocean Blue, which you're looking at here, and Coke Black. The Coke Black version has a black dial and a Coke black and red bezel. So firstly, let's look at the box that the watch comes in, and then I'll talk you through the specifications of the piece. Now, I understand that this is a pre-production prototype of the watch box that SW Watches will be using, but it will be very similar to the production model. It's a plastic watch box with hinge lid, contrasting white stitching, and as you can see, it is fully coated with genuine leather. So it's good to see genuine leather used rather than synthetic PU leather at this price point, and it makes a refreshing change from using the default option of a cardboard or plastic watch box. So inside there's a foam protective panel which protects the watch in shipping and the watch sits on a padded pillow cushion which is velour upholstered and the interior of the watch box is also fully velour upholstered to a good standard. So good quality watch box and I really like the genuine leather. It's got a nice grained finish to it and it gives the watch a high quality feel. Now the production models will also come with a microfiber polishing cloth, warranty card and owner's instruction manual and when the campaign is fully funded they're also going to be offering, as an alternative to the bracelet, a rubber strap with the watch. So, with regards to the specifications of the piece, this is the D-Ward Spino Diver 300. It uses a very similar case to the Oris Aquis, and also the bracelet is very similar. So, similar proportions to the Aquis, we have a 41.5mm case diameter. We have a 47.8mm lug-to-lug measurement, a thickness of 12.4mm, now we have an integrated bracelet and as you can see the widest part of the integrated lugs is 23.4 millimeters and the lugs taper and the bracelet tapers down to 18 millimeters at the two button push clasp. The two button push clasp is signed to high standard with D Ward engraved. Nice foam resistance to the two button push triggers, solid 316L grade stainless steel milled clasp, beautiful luster to the brass satin finishing which complements the brass satin finishing to the flanks. Nice mirror polished bevel to the edges which mark the transition between the body and the flanks. Now as always I'm going to be critical of the clasp only having three micro adjustment holes. Personally I would prefer to see D Ward introduce another hole and four micro adjustment holes would better allow for fine tuning the length of the bracelet. But having said that the two button push triggers work very well. Solid milled interior to the clasp made from 316L grade, beautiful luster to the 316L grade stainless steel, brass satin finish to the top side, underside and flanks, so it's a very well executed clasp, no sharp edges, no burrs. We also have a solid milled diver's extension link as you can see and it's mirror polished to a very high standard. It snaps into the body with a nice positive click and it deploys with a nice positive click. Nice to see they've used a solid milled diver's extension rather than using the cost cutting measure of a pressed stainless steel clasp. So the clasp is very good quality, I like the look of it. Snap shut with a nice positive click so it really just needs four micro adjustment holes to enhance it. With regards to the rest of the specification, we have a double dome sapphire crystal with clear AR coating on the underside. And the clear AR coating does an excellent job of reducing the glare and the highly reflective nature of the silver mirror polished applied indices and the silver mirror polished baton hands. I like the attention to detail with the arrowhead tip to the second hand. And as you can see, the dial is sunburst blue, but it graduates. It's an electric blue, which graduates to royal blue and then finally a navy blue at the circumference. 60 minute ticks contrast very well in white around the chapter ring and I like the symmetry of the dial with the absence of a date complication. It's clearly legible. It's got the classic Submariner dial layout and I really like it uh, with this graduated dial. So of the three colour versions, Nebula Green, Phantom Black, Ocean Blue and Coke Black, this Ocean Blue version with the graduated dial which is sunburst finish is my personal favourite. D Ward deserve full credit because they've put the brand emblem, which is a compass, at 12 o'clock, the D Ward brand logo at 12, and then they've simply put Spino Diver and 1000 feet equals 300 meters at 6. So, just the right amount of information. It's not over branded with unnecessary text or specification to make the dial too cluttered. So, I like the symmetry of the dial and I also like the legibility of it. It is very good. 
With regards to the bezel, it's 120 click unidirectional bezel. Now, personally, I would prefer to see a conventional dive bezel with minutes in Arabic numerals rather than using an hour bezel as per GMT watch. But I understand that the thinking behind this from D Ward was that the bezel could be dual purpose. For example, you can use this as a countdown timing bezel by multiplying the Arabic numerals by five minutes. Two times five minutes is 10 minutes, three times five minutes is 15 minutes, etc. So you can use the Arabic numerals for a countdown down timing. The other thing is you can use it as a GMT bezel because you can line up the Arabic numeral with the hour hand and therefore have a second time zone using the rotating bezel. So let's test the bezel execution. 120 click unidirectional bezel as one would expect. Nice light resistance to it. I like the loud audible clicks. It feels even all the way through the 360 degrees of rotation. No lateral side side play whatsoever. No back play whatsoever. So it's a nice tight bezel execution, even though it has lighter, resistant, lighter resistance than a Seiko or Steinhardt bezel, bezel which you may be familiar with. Let's check the alignment. Perfect. The fully looms triangle perfectly aligns with the 12 o'clock index on the dial. So this is an example to other brands at this price point, how to get it correct. No lateral side side play, no back play, perfect alignment. This is 10 out of 10 bezel execution. With regards to the crown, it's an old finish, mirror polished cap to it, and it's embossed to a high standard with the compass, which is the DW Watches, sorry, D Ward uh, Watches uh, brand logo. So let's test the execution. Absolutely silky smooth, very smooth interface between the internal thread of the stainless steel crown and the external thread of the stainless steel crown tube. The screw down crown provides an effective hermetic seal to 300 meters, which is very strong specification. So this is powered by the Seiko VH31 quartz and therefore there isn't a phantom date setting position. Pulling it out to the first click is the final click position and we're now in the time setting position. As you can see the movement hacks, I've now hacked the second hand so one can stop the second hand dead to set the time precisely to the second. Absolutely silky smooth both clockwise and anti-clockwise, no back play in the VH31 whatsoever, it's a very well executed movement. Pushing it back in restarts the movement. As you can see, the second hand now begins to sweep around the dial once again. So this is a characteristic I really like about the VH31 quartz. Unlike other quartz movements, which tick around the dial one tick per second, this beats at four beats per second. So it has a smoother sweep rather than ticking one tick every second. It beats at four ticks per second. And as you can see, it looks more like an automatic rather than a quartz. So let's test screwing it back down. Immediate thread pickup, this is outstanding screw down crown execution. Very good interface between the internal thread of the stainless steel crown and the external thread of the stainless steel crown tube. I really like the thread interface. So again, 10 out of 10 screw down crown execution. So I'll show you the case back. As you can see, it's engraved to a high standard with the Spinosaurus. The Spinosaurus was a dinosaur that was amphibious. So this is where the name Spino Diver comes from, Spino coming from Spinosaurus. So the Spinosaurus dinosaur is engraved to a very high standard, nice wavy pattern engraved. And around the circumference, we have the specification of the piece, brass satin finish to it and finish to a very high standard. The benefit of using a VH31 quartz is one can make the case back low profile and flat. So it's very comfortable against the wrist. The milled slots are very well finished, no sharp edges, no burrs. And it does provide an effective hermetic seal to 300 meters, which is very strong specification. The female pivoted integrated end links are a good tight fit to the integrated lugs. And I like the use of two quick release spring bars, as you can see. And this means one doesn't need a spring bar tool to remove the integrated bracelet from the head of the piece. And I understand that when the campaign is fully funded, as discussed, they're also going to be offering rubber straps to fit the integrated lugs as an add-on. And it's an absolute pleasure. I tried removing the bracelet to test out the quick release spring bars and it works very well. One can quickly disengage the spring bar and re-engage it to the integrated lugs. Now, I also like the fact that these female pivoted end links, as you can see, have lots of articulation and this works very well. They're very smooth, they're very good tight fit to the integrated lugs. But if you have a smaller wrist, the articulation of the female pivoted end links means that the end of the bracelet pulls snugly to the wrist. So this works better than male end links and I really like that detail. With regards to the finishing of the bracelet, brass satin finish to the center links, nice angular profile. 
and mirror polished to the outer links which complements the brass satin finishing as you can see to the flanks. Push pins are a cost cutting measure. Personally at this price point I'd prefer to see screw pins used in the bracelet rather than push pins but however the bracelet is finished to a good standard. One detail I like about it is it tapers in width uh, down to the clasp by 18 millimeters, but it also tapers in thickness as per the Oris Aquis. If you look at the spring bar ends, you can see that the thickness of the links is thicker, and then it gradually tapers down in thickness down to the two button push clasp. So the rest of the links are thinner, and that means it wears very comfortable against the wrist. It doesn't feel like a chunky, heavy bracelet. It actually articulates very well, and because it's low profile, it means that it flexes and it's very comfortable. So it's a very good quality bracelet. The only negative really is the use of push pins. If this used screw pins, it really would be very high grade, but one has to expect some cost cutting measures, bearing in mind it's 349 US dollars. So I'll give you a wrist shots and you can see how it fits on my eight inch wrist. Now I haven't sized the bracelet and as you can see it fits my 8 inch wrist perfectly without any resizing. So if you have a large wrist of seven to eight inches, this Spino Diver 300 will fit you no problem whatsoever. The bracelet does feel very comfortable, it's very flexible, articulates very well, and no sharp edges, no burrs to the flanks or the underside to the center links. Now, it is a large piece, it does wear with wrist presence because it is 41.5 millimeters. Feels very similar to the Oris Aquis because of course it has the same case shape and also bracelet but it is lower profile than an Oris Aquis because it's only 12.4 millimeters thick. And that came as a pleasant surprise because it uses a double dome sapphire crystal, as you can see. If this were Seiko NH35A powered, for example, or automatic powered, one would expect this to be in excess of 13 millimeters. So it's only 12.4 millimeters. This is a very low profile piece for a 41 millimeter head of the piece. The integrated lugs work, work, work very well because there's a nice taper from 23.4 at the widest point of the integrated lugs and the bracelet gradually tapers from 23.4 down to 18 millimeters at the two button push clasp. So they've got the proportions of the taper correct. The lug width is also correct for a 41.5 millimeter head of the piece. So although it's large, it's actually deceptive because it's low profile at 12.4. It will easily slip underneath a shirt cuff if you wear business shirts. The other thing to note is it's only 156 grams, which is very lightweight for a 41.5 millimeter head of the piece. I would expect this to be in excess of 160 grams at 41.5 millimeters. So 12.4 is a nice low profile height and also 156 grams is nice because it gives a feeling of wrist presence and also heft, it feels quality, but it also feels very well balanced it doesn't feel top heavy. The bracelet balances the head of the piece very well. And I really like the double dome sapphire crystal and the clear AR coating works very well. So very aesthetically pleasing piece. If you like the Oris Aquis, but you're looking for a less expensive option, this will suffice. And also if you like the practicality of a quartz, rather than having to manually wind or wear a piece eight to 12 hours per day as per an automatic, the VH31 quartz will suffice. So good looking piece, comfortable to wear for long periods of time. And I like the fact it's got a low profile flat screw down case back because that does enhance the comfort. Right, so let's do a loom test and we'll see how the loom performs when it's charged up to the absolute maximum. So as always, I'm going to use my 100 UV LED torch to charge it up to the absolute peak. Right, so that's now fully charged and as you can see, it has not disappointed. This is Swiss C3 Superluminova, top grade Superluminova. And as you can see, it's clearly five to six layers on the applied indices and five to six layers on the baton hands. The fully loomed triangle on the ceramic bezel insert is also inlay inlaid very well. So good color match. The green tone of the C3 matches well on the triangle, on the ceramic bezel insert, the applied indices and the baton hands. And also one can clearly see the arrowhead tip to the second hand. Now, one detail I like about the VH31, as I've discussed, is the four beats per second beat rate, as you can see. It gives the impression of an automatic. It sweeps around the dial rather than ticking one tick per second as per a conventional quartz. So looking at the arrowhead tip to the second hand, one can see it sweeping around at four beats per second, and it's very aesthetically pleasing. So as this is Swiss 
C3 Superluminova, it's top grade. It's going to continue glowing brightly for a good length of time. As you can see, unlike low quality Luminova, this isn't fading. And I really like this. I think green is the correct choice. I love C3. It's one of my personal favorites, as you'll know from my previous reviews. I also like BGW9, but this is just absolutely gorgeous. The color tone of the green matches very well. It's glowing very brightly and it's still glowing strongly. So I think that they deserve full credit for not cutting any corners with regards to the quality of the Swiss C3 Superluminova they've used. Right, so let's discuss the movement used. You'll all be familiar with the Seiko VH31 Quartz. It's a reliable, well-proven quartz movement, which is made in Japan. The stated accuracy of the VH31 is plus or minus 15 seconds per month. And I want you to consider that for a second. That's not plus or minus 15 seconds per day or per week. That is per month. Better than plus or minus one second per day accuracy. So it's an incredibly accurate movement. The VH31 has a stated two year battery life and as I've detailed my favorite aspect of it if you look closely at the second hand you can see that it sweeps at four beats per second rather than ticking at one tick per second so it gives the appearance of an automatic rather than a quartz. No negatives to the VH31 whatsoever it's one of my personal favorite Seiko quartz movements reliable accurate the build quality is good the quality control is good the quality of the materials is good so it's reliable well proven accurate and the two-year battery life is perfectly acceptable i like the fact it's got hacking one can hack the movement to set the time precisely to the second and it's the correct choice so the benefit of it of using a quartz in this piece rather than an automatic such as the nh35a is that it reduces the thickness because quartz movements are thinner than automatics and therefore the thickness of this piece, although it's 41.5 diameter, is only 12.4 millimeters thick. And anything under 13 millimeters will easily slip underneath the shirt cuff of a business shirt, but it means that it doesn't wear top heavy. For example, had SW watches used the NH35A in this, it would have been in excess of 13 millimeters with the double dome sapphire crystal. And therefore it would have felt top heavy and it would have also increased the heft from 156 grams to 160. So it keeps the weight down by using a quartz and it also keeps the thickness down to 12.4. And it feels very well balanced. I've previously reviewed the Oris Aquis and that's SW200-1 powered and it's a thicker piece and also it's a heavier piece and I can tell you that this is noticeably lighter and it also is noticeably um, thinner. So I like the fact it's 12.4 and I like the fact it's 156 grams. So they are the benefits of using the Seiko VH31 quartz rather than using the NH35A which would have been the other default option. Right, so lastly I'll summarise the piece. What do I think of it overall? Well, when I'm considering reviewing a watch on my channel, the watch meet two criteria. It should be both excellent quality and excellent value at the respective price point. So the early bird price point on the Kickstarter campaign is 349 US dollars. Really to evaluate this piece, is it excellent quality and excellent value? One has to study the finishing throughout. The quality of the finishing to the head of the piece, the bezel, the case back, and also the bracelet and clasp are all excellent. No sharp edges, no burst of the bracelet, and no extra play in it. It actually is very well made, despite the use of push pins rather than screw pins. The solid mill clasp is outstanding, but it would benefit from an extra hole to give it full micro adjustment holes. But the solid milled diver's extension is very well executed. So yes, it is excellent quality and yes, it is excellent value at 349 US dollars. So I'm going to highly recommend it to you for your consideration. I hope you've enjoyed my review of the D Ward Spino Diver 300. Please feel free to post your own comments below the video. Thank you very much.